Hey guys, this is Max Headspace 9mm and we're going to do a little workbench top work today on the PS90. Now, there's a lot of guns out there that have things that could be better. You know, we all know and we've all seen that before. And then there's guns that are pretty hard to improve upon. With the PS90, I thought for me, having this billet receiver was an improvement and I still feel that way. Some people may disagree. If you want the traditional look of the, the gun you've seen in the video games, why, you know, you probably don't wanna go for this option, but functionally speaking, I think this has been a huge improvement. What else is there? Well, there's not much else I can do to this at this point other than order a sling for it. I do wanna get a sling because I do think that this gun, if you can carry it around with you, if you have a sling, would be an easy option to pack around. But in my experience over the years that I've been shooting guns, I have found that the vast majority of all malfunctions are the fault of the magazine. Now these are phenomenal magazines, I gotta tell you, like everything that FN makes, these are great high quality mags. And I was very excited to find out that there are other people, other manufacturers creating this design magazine as well. In fact, ProMag, which I'm generally not a huge fan of, I think they, they produce some iffy results in the magazine world. They produce now a magazine for this gun that is about half the price of these. You could pick one up for about $14, $15. And generally, I don't think skimping on a magazine is a good idea, but the ProMag model has an advantage over these that I think is very significant. The plastic they use is absolutely clear. You can see everything going on in here. That's not a problem, really. I mean, normally I can see inside of this just fine, check my round count and so forth. But uh, having it be absolutely clear is pretty tempting. So I might just get one of those and torture test it and see if it actually winds up being as good as this. But one area where this thing is very, very critical, critical in function is it has these rollers. I don't know if you can see this, but right here inside, you can see the roller. It goes crossways here. There's two of them inside this magazine. And um, what people who have shot these guns a lot generally say they do is they replace those rollers because they are made in a clamshell mold with injection molded plastic. And there's seam lines and there's some deformities on them that aren't perfect. And if they wind up rolling against each other and some of those deformities make contact, they might just start sliding instead of rolling, which can cause some stoppages. So I saw on the internet a company named Man Cave Specialties makes a Delrin roller that is all lathe turned. It's beautiful. This thing is flawless. There isn't a tool mark on it. It is slippery. Delrin is a very slippery plastic, self-lubricating plastic. And the reason a lot of gun manufacturers are making guns now out of combinations of metal and plastic is because plastic is self-lubricating. And uh, in all good relationships, there's give and take. And the relationships that last the longest are the ones <coughs> where the friction is the least. And that's why guns have become so reliable. I think guns are more reliable now than they were 50 years ago when they were all metal. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna I've actually not taken one of these magazines apart, so this actually has some uh, threads around it from the lathe. You know, when they lathe turn this, they basically shave off tiny, tiny little threads. It looks like doll hair, and it's still wound around this one. So check them if you get these and clean them up. So uh, I went on the internet to about 10 different sources that sold these. I couldn't find them anywhere. They were all sold out. They're manufactured originally by Man Cave Specialties. I went to the same website, FN90, uh, FN Products, that sold me this billet receiver. They were out of them. But finally, 
I found them at a website called Midwest Gunworks. And the price on these is $2 each. It's a pretty cheap product when you think about it. $2 each, so that's $4 per magazine. That's just not that much money uh, to ensure more reliable results. So we're gonna try taking these apart. Now the way you take these apart, I do know, is you push in this button right here, and then you can slide off the end plate of the magazine while keeping your thumb over the spring. Otherwise it'll go springing across the room like those snakes in the candy, uh, candy cans that used to give away as a gag, you know, when you were kids. Okay, so this is what it looks like inside. This is the follower, it's got an angle to it. The angle always points up to the top because basically it's lifting up those rollers. So we gotta remember, put this in the correct way when you put it back together. And then we wanna get the rollers out of here. Now when I look at these rollers, they're not nearly as smooth. They do have mold seam lines on them. Uh, the ends have some rough edges on them that could catch inside the magazine body. And uh, there's just a lot of um, casting flaws to these things. When you really look at them up close, you look at them next to this, this is flawless. There's nothing about this that catches the eye that would drag on anything. So, who knows? I mean, out of you know dozens and dozens of uses, if I roll these against each other, you know, they're gritty, they're grindy, and they catch. And who knows if that's enough to hang up? I just don't know. So we're gonna go ahead and put a couple of these rollers, making absolutely certain there's no um, material from the factory, from manufacturer on these. And what you wanna do is you want to roll them down just like that. And so they get to the bottom. Yeah, I didn't do a good job of that. But you want it to wind up crossways in the feed lips just like it looked like before. And then take another one and do the same thing. And there it is. That was that easy. Very, very simple. Not a problem at all. And because my feed lips are facing down, I want this kind of an angle on this deal right here, because remember, it pushes up on those rollers up into the feed lips. Okay, and I hold this in place with my finger. And then I slide this back over. Whoop. Yeah. I don't know if you can go on both ends with this, but maybe. And then this thing keeps it in place. And look at that. That is a beautiful thing right there, that roller. I love it. All right, so there is how to put these rollers into an FN P90 or PS90 magazine. It's a tiny thing, it costs almost nothing. It's easy to do. There's no reason not to do it. So uh, why wouldn't you, you know? Um, if you can upgrade a part and it's easy to do and it costs next to nothing, you should do it. If it improves reliability or at least gives you more confidence in the tools that you use to defend your life. So I hope this helps. If you have a P90 or a PS90, it's an easy fix to do. I would pick yourself up a bunch of these. Get two for every magazine you have or every magazine you are likely to ever get. And this is Max Headspace 9mm saying, have a good one.